Hi guys, Tracy here with a new feature on my YouTube channel called Think Outside the Kit. This is a series of videos where I'm going to put away my scrapbooking kits and just use my stash. So for this layout, I'm using a sketch from the Creative Scrappers Creating with Sketches Volume 3 book, which uh, I showed you I brought up there on my iPad. I have a discount code there that I put up on the screen for you guys, and I will also link it in the information section below. So I'm just showing you what the front page looks like. And uh, I've ordered the hard copy of this book because I love having it in hard copy, um, but I also have the e-version and that's what I am looking at right now. So I'm just putting that up in my easel so that I can refer to it as I scrap the morning away. And uh, I just grabbed my ingredients list and a piece of Stampin' Up! grid paper because I'm going to do some outlining. And sorry I disappeared for a minute there. I'm having some trouble with my printer. I have to clean my print heads. And so um, while I do that, I decided I would put this paper, kind of set it up for being put away. So this is what I do when I get a new collection. This is the Creative Agenda collection from by Caitlin Schaefer and it's from Echo Park and so when I get a new collection of paper I take a tab punch using the rounded tab punch from Stampin' Up! take a punch out of that sheet of paper that comes in the very front that just shows you what's inside of the pack and then I glue it as you see right down to a piece of 12 by 12 chipboard and usually the paper hangs off the chipboard a little bit because the paper is more than 12 by 12 the, the front sheet is uh, because it includes the manufacturer strip as well so anyways I don't really worry too much about that and then I just create this little tab and that allows me to store my paper vertically in my cubes as you guys have seen if you've watched my uh, scrap room tours and I can basically see all the collections that I have and just kind of browse it as I, I kind of look through my papers while they're in their vertical storage cubes. So what I'm doing here is I'm just uh, going through the papers in this collection because I absolutely love the colors and uh, the pictures that I'm going to be scrapbooking feature a lot of pink in, in one big bunch of the, of the photo and so I decided to use this collection for that reason. So now I'm just having a look through some of the patterns that I might want to use with that sketch. So if you've noticed at the beginning when I showed the sketch, it has a lot of vertical lines all across it, like a whole bunch of strips. And so I started by uh, cutting a mat for my photos because my I'm... I'm actually printing three photos but they're going to be in one strip and I'm treating them as one. So then I'm just taking some of my favorite pattern papers and I'm cutting little strips out of them. So I love this tight floral design um, and it's perfect for strips because it's such a tight pattern that even if you cut a narrow strip you'll still see lots of the pattern. So I definitely wanted that so I cut two of those because I like that one so much. And then I thought that this one would make a good wide strip so one of the strips on the sketch is wider than the others and it it's where the title goes and so I thought that that one would be good for having a title on the back of it on front like over top of it because it's not very distracting it's a sub it's a more subtle pattern it's like a white on one tone instead of being as distracting as some of these other patterns are and then these overlapping dots are another one of my favorites from the collection so I picked that one out as well and then I absolutely love these arrows as well, so I had to get those on this layout. So these kinds of sketches that include a, a lot of strips of paper, it's a really great way to get lots of your favorite patterns from a collection on, onto a layout. So I just have to fix this up a little bit, and when I do, it's going to move because of the way that... Um, this trimmer works. So I'm just going to bring that over to my other trimmer which is actually buried um, so I couldn't, I, it's not so buried that I couldn't use it but it's buried enough that I didn't bring it over to my table here. <laughs> just the edge that you cut on was showing so I, I just fixed up that strip. Okay so I just fixed my microphone so I hope that it, it, there was something weird going on with it in the last two videos so I hope that it's better now. So again I'm just picking some of my favorite patterns and I really love this paper that has the days of the week on it and I just made sure that I chose a part of it that included both colors because it's one of my favorite features of that paper is that it, it has the days of the week in kind of a variegated like it, it moves from one color to the other um, and I just really love the interesting look of having the font be in different colors so I wanted to make sure that I got that in the sample that I took and so this 
is pretty much the layout. It's going to change a little tiny bit, but this is pretty much the layout that I'm going with. And so I'm just having a look at some of the other papers, and I realized that I would really like to copy the uh, chevron pattern that comes in the sketch. It's it's kind of you know you can you can interpret a sketch whatever way you want and a lot of times I use a sketch as a starting off point and then I don't end up following it very much um, but in this case I I really wanted to use I, I wanted this layout to look a lot like the sketch because I really love the way the sketch looks so I decided to use my Stampin' Up! Chevron punch and grab some chevrons and I just used the same pattern paper that came in the creative agenda collection that I used for the mat and that will tie those two uh, papers together because when I when I punch out a punch that is so small I like to use a subtle pattern so that it kind of reads as a solid and that pattern is uh, kind of like that. So now I am just uh, adjusting the size of my strips a little bit just to accommodate the fact that I've added that strip of chevrons in and I'm just kind of cutting down the lengths of my strips so that they are the lengths that I want them to be and that which is not exactly the same size. I don't want them to all be the same size but some of them will be the same size and I'm just cutting a little fishtail banner on either end of this piece which is again going to hold my title so there we go and I wanted it a tiny bit shorter so I just shortened it a little bit and now that is pretty much going to be the layout I think it looks about right So I want to take a picture of that so I don't forget because I definitely want to outline these papers. So what I'm doing now is I'm just looking at my outlining pens. I've got a whole bunch of them and I'm trying to decide what color I want to outline these papers in. Normally I would outline them in um, in black but I'm going to outline them in gray. While I was doing that I noticed that there's this Saturday sticker and then there's also this create sticker. So there's the Saturday and then there's the create. What I'm going to do here, I just had to trim the little bits off of it where the colors were showing from the other stickers. I just grabbed the C from create and put it over the S so that now I have a sticker that says Catterday. <laughs> I can't help but laugh at that because I, I'm, I'm pleased <laughs> to have Catter Day on my layout. This is, these are the photos, so finally my, my printer was finished cleaning its print heads, and uh, I have these three photos of my two daughters and then our, our honorary third daughter, uh, Lorelei, who is uh, par part of our family. <laughs> um, and so... Uh, I just have those three photos and it, they were taken on a day that I had the three girls with me. We went to, the, I took them to the cat show and uh, in the city and then we stopped at the mall uh, because Olivia had an errand to run there and so we stopped and had Subway for lunch and, and grabbed some cookies at Subway after we finished our sandwiches and I'm just cutting another fishtail banner in this orange pattern paper. And uh, yeah, so it was just kind of like a fun day and it was very cat oriented fun day. So a catter day really is appropriate. <laughs> so I just put the catter day sticker back on the sticker sheet for now because I uh, don't want to lose it. And I've been losing things lately when I, when I make things. So I'm trying to keep track of stuff a little bit better. <laughs> So I'm having a look here just to decide what kind of embellishments I might want to include on this layout. I have pretty much the gist of the layers of paper figured out. Grabbed one more photo, uh, but I ended up not needing a photo because I'm just going to take each strip off, outline it, and then put the strip back. I'm using, I went, a, I went ahead and used the Chamel Gray uh, American Crafts pen. I think it's called a precision pen. 
um, but this one just says Chamel. It doesn't say Precision Pen on it. Uh, and it's from the Chamel collection, and I really like the shade of gray. And uh, it's just, it provides a little bit of a softer outline than a harsh black line would give. And so that's what I decided to go with. I thought about outlining in blue, actually, and I thought about outlining in black. So that was the decision I was making back a few minutes ago when I said I'm just looking at my pens right now. Um, but I went with the gray. And just finishing up the outlining and I'm outlining every single one of those strips but I'm not going to outline the chevron pieces because it would be too finicky and I just like the look and it, there's enough contrast on between the background paper and those pink chevrons without outlining so I'm just going to leave those and that uh, jigsaw, it's not jigsaw puzzle, the crossword puzzle uh, piece that I have, I made sure that it includes the word friends and together, just because I thought that that was appropriate, because Lorelai is our friend, um, although, she, as I mentioned, she's sort of an honorary family member for us. Uh, and so she comes to our house after school two or three days a week, and we just love her to death, so... And here I'm just, on the banners, what I like to do on almost all of my banners and labels is uh, kind of glue down the middle flat and then use pop dots on the ends so that it looks, it has a bit of dimension and a bit of curve to it. And now I'm going to vary between having these strips be curved, like I just mentioned, which I do on the banners, so kind of pop dots on the edges and then regular adhesive in the middle, and then some of them are going to be glued flat down, and then others are going to be pop dotted up the whole way, and that gives a really nice shadow when you do that. A shadow the whole way across, as opposed to the shadow you get on the banners, which is just the shadow at the ends and the curvature at the ends. So this one will be glued down entirely again, and now this one, I'm going to put pop dots all the way along. And those are just Stampin' Up! dimensional adhesive. So again, that one I'm putting flat down. And as I put these down, what I'm deciding is that uh, the ones that are ad adhered flat to the, to the background paper are the ones that I'm going to do some sewing on. So I've decided already which ones I'll sew on, and those are all of the flat ones, which I think is three. So now I want to adhere these. I'm, I do plan to sew down the middle of this, this line of chevrons, but uh, I do have to glue them down first just so that they stay in, in place. And I want to pull them up. Like I want to pull up the little wings on the edges of each of those chevron pieces. And so uh, I'm trying to only glue the very center parts with my ATG. And basically what I'm doing is I'm just kind of wiping some adhesive onto it, uh, kind of rubbing it on, and then placing the chevron. And it helps to line up the kind of the flat part of the chevron, so the part of the chevron that is horizontal. It helps to, to just kind of try to line that up with the paper line that's ahead of it, that's above it and below it, so that helps to keep the chevron looking straight. So now I'm just pointing out that I'm going to sew on all of the flat ones. So here is that. I slowed it down so you can see it a little bit better. I used blue thread and I sewed all the way along that one and then I sewed three short lines on that one and then I sewed all the way along the chevron and then three two little strips on the other side of that one. Now I'm just going to use some regular scotch tape. I sometimes will use washi tape, but I found this adorable cat uh, tape dispenser, and so I had to buy it, <laughs> even though I didn't really need it. I just wanted it because it was so cute. It looks like he's playing with a roll of tape. He's got his paws through the roll. It's so cute. 
and it's weighted like it's got sand inside of it you can hear it shaking when you pick it up and so uh, it doesn't knock over very easily or anything which is actually convenient if you have real cats in your scrap room so which I do although not this morning they were still snuggly when I'm doing this layout it's actually quite early in the morning I think it's about 6 a.m. and everybody's still sleeping including the cats So I'm just double checking the sketch and I'm pointing out there that this sketch includes those three little places where there are circles. That just indicates that those are suggested places that you could place embellishment clusters. And so uh, I'm going to go ahead and use that as my base for my basis for which I will decide where I place it. I'm just going to follow what the sketch says. And here I'm using a navy blue slick writer. And what I really love about this slick writer is that it out oh, it, um, it marks in quite a light color of navy blue. So even though navy blue is sort of a dark color, it's, it's not a very vibrant marker. So it doesn't give a harsh, extreme line to it. And this, this alarm clock has some really fine edges on it. And I love outlining stickers that don't have an outline already on them because it just provides a little bit of additional definition. Um, I do plan to pop dot this and I just, I want this embellishment to be the main embellishment that I'm using on this layout, like the one that kind of gets most of your attention. And so I wanted to outline it, but I didn't want it to be too harsh of an outline. So that navy blue slick writer pen is perfect for that and I got that pen in a Scraptastic kit as one of the little giveaways that they give um, not giveaways but the little freebies that you get for getting two kits in a row and I really like that but I think it needs something underneath of it and this color wheel type of thing I don't know if it's meant to be a color wheel or what it's supposed to be sorry I forgot to zoom out there but you can see that I'm holding that little um, color wheel pie charty type of thing. It's not a full circle, so it's not really a, a pie chart. Anyhow, I'm going to call it a color wheel. Uh, so I, I think that the alarm clock will look really great on that color wheel. And I just grabbed the Catter Day sticker so I don't forget about it. So it's right there with the alarm clock. And yeah, I'm just going to put everything on a piece of wax paper. I'm just picking out some of my favorite stickers that I think will go nicely with this layout. And so I'm basing that on color and also the fact that I feel like I want to have lots of circles. So I'm picking out some circles and none of the phrases are really jumping out at me as something that I really want. Um, I have that speech bubble just in case. Um, and I grabbed a, one of, see the, the circle with the exclamation point on it? I just grabbed one of those but I was trying to keep in mind that I have several of them in different colors on the sheet so that's more of a sample than anything else so I went and grabbed my thickers I have a pretty big collection of thickers from over the years and uh, I'm pulling out I'm having a look mostly at the gray and black letter stickers but before I put them away I'm just going to take a quick glance through the colored and then I thought about white and then I realized no I'm putting this title on a background paper that has white in it so I didn't want to use white because it kind of you lose the emphasis when you put white on white or any color on the same color. So these are print shop thickers, they're cardstock, uh, no they're not cardstock, they're chipboard uh, letter stickers and they tend, to, I find that thickers, see what happened with the L there, uh, thickers that are made out of chipboard tend to, or printed chipboard anyways, tend to separate so the sticky layer on the very bottom tends to separate off of the rest of it and then you have to either glue them back together or just get rid of the sticky part and glue the rest of the sticker right down onto the page. So I, I'm, I'm actually not entirely sure what the title is going to be as I do this. I knew it was going to have the word girls in it and then I thought maybe us girls and then I thought maybe just us girls. So that's what I'm going with. And I've, I'm not in love with the placement of that, of that title, so I'm just going to cut it apart a little bit so that I can play around with how I want to place those words. And I, I'm still kind of thinking about whether I want to use these as the, as the words for my title. If I can get them to look nice together, then I'll go with that title, but if I can't, then I'll change it. 
So I like this, but I need to put something above the word girls if I do this. So I'm thinking I could uh, set up my words like this and then add some embellishments right on top of the word girls because I want this to be an embellished layout and uh, meaning more embellishments than I might normally use. I want to use lots of like stickers and things all over this layout. Uh, and I think that this kind of a layout that has uh, strips of paper all uh, spread out as opposed to a bunch of layers of paper is a lot more conducive to using big clusters of embellishments. So uh, because, you know, things don't get too uh, cluttered up when you have things spread out like this. So I'm thinking I might actually put my main embellishment, which is this layered two layers of, of stickers from the Creative Agenda collection, right here. And I, I can slide that part of the color wheel right up there underneath of the photo. And then I'm just going to pick the, uh, the I and the G up and slide that sticker underneath of them like that. And now that eye is 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 um, splitting apart, like the layers are separating in it. So I just had to apply some of my Zig glue pen to uh, the back side of it. And now this sticker will make another nice embellishment right here. It's a little long, and I want this the C to show so that you can read it. Uh, but I don't want the Y to hang off the page because it'll get cut off if it does. So I had to play around a little bit with its placement just to make sure that it was straight and readable and falling in the right place that when I put the alarm clock down, I basically want that C to be nestled, nestled right in the corner of where that, that leg of the alarm clock meets the circle of the alarm clock because then you can maximize how much of the C in Celebrate you can you can see. So uh, then I saw these morning, afternoon, and evening stickers, and I thought they kind of went with the whole idea of time, like spending time together, make time for fun. Um, so morning, afternoon, and evening. I, I don't think we were out until the evening, um, but it was, you know, we spent the whole day together, so that was close enough. So I just took those pop dots off of the sticker, like the backing off of the pop dots so that I could uh, stick that down in place. And then I just shifted those stickers over a tiny little bit so that there wasn't white space trapped in between the alarm clock and the morning, afternoon, and evening stickers. There's a tiny bit of white space just really underneath of the bell of the alarm clock, but I'm not, you know, I'm not too concerned about that. You don't really notice it. I want to use that circle sticker with Saturday, and I definitely want something up over there. I'm going to put Catterday there instead. And I just didn't want it to line up exactly with the edge of that photo, so I just shifted it down a little bit. I'm going to put check this out, that sticker right there. And at first I had it on an angle, but I thought that that clashed a little bit with the uh, all of the horizontal lines, so I decided to have it be horizontal instead. And now these Cal Berteschi letter stickers by Amy Tan, they're thickers, and they are probably, I know I say this a lot, but seriously, my all-time favorite letter sticker. Yeah my all-time favorite letter sticker. I had to think about that for a second, but I have to say, if I had to pick just one letter sticker that I could have for the rest of my life, it would have to be this Cal Berteschi because it's black, it's foam. I love foam thickers. I love black foam letter stickers. They're just awesome. Um, and it's just this really cool, casual script. I just love it. And it, it adds so much to a layout. Um, especially a layout like this where all of the colors are sort of all in the same family. And that happens sometimes when you scrapbook almost exclusively with one collection. It kind of looks samey. I'm going to use samey as an as a adjective there. Um, it looks samey. <laughs> and so putting a pop of black is kind of unexpected. There's no black anywhere in this collection. The accent is navy blue instead of black. Um, so anyways, while I was talking about all that stuff and creating the word samey, um, I also was uh, going through my embellishments. So you saw me take out my little embellishment suitcase there. And then I also see that right underneath. Yeah, 
that's it. Um, and I keep bows and little little special embellishments in there. I also took out two freckled fawn embellishment kits. I don't subscribe to the freckled fawn embellishment kit, but I do buy a whole lot of them. I probably ought to subscribe. Um, but I just kind of every month I decide if I want the kit and I and I go ahead and usually end up buying it just because I'm I really, really love in unique little interesting embellishments. So I just went through two of the most recent kits, the October and September kits, and pulled out a couple of little cute embellishments that I might want to add to this layout. Those resin outline hearts are from a previous freckled fawn uh, embellishment kit. They come in yellow, or sorry, in orange and in pink. And then I use the asterisks and some of the little um, brackety shapes from the Cal uh letter stickers to just to create three potential places for embellishments in addition to the title. There's actually four there, sorry about that. Well, yeah, there's four. So three of them are asterisks and then one is those two brackets that are over there that I'm using sort of like arrows. And now I'm just placing a few things from my stash here. So these uh, ribbon bows are from Studio Calico and then I think the tiny ribbon bows, like the one that, that's in grey and the one that's that's pink that's above the L for girls. Those smaller ones I think are Maggie Holmes. I'm pretty almost completely sure that they're Maggie Holmes. Then that pink thing that you see over by my finger right now uh, a minute ago is a resin flower from Stampin' Up. It's a Dahlia. I think that's what it is. I thought about changing one of those for an ampersand but not gonna do it. Um, so I'm just basically building little clusters of embellishments around each of those places that I put the little asterisky, starry shaped um, Calbertesky black foam stickers. So I stuck in that butterfly from Maya Road, which is one of my favorite embellishments, and so just layered that Saturday sticker from the Creative Agenda uh, collection, this outline resin heart from Freckled Fawn from maybe July or August, maybe even June. Um, and then the bow over there in that corner. And then in this corner, I'm just putting the heart for now. I'll add a few things later. So each of the main clusters of embellishments has an outline heart and a bow and a couple of other little things beside it. And then that extra cluster of embellishments up at the very top in the top right hand corner. I wasn't sure if I was going to leave that or get rid of it because it is it's sort of a fourth cluster and I, it, things feel comfortable in threes uh, but I just thought it added a little something unexpected and brought your eye up to the top to just take in the full design of all of those strips of paper so I decided to leave it there. Although I, I, ha I don't think I had decided as of yet. Then these are little enamel dots that came in one of the freckled fawn kits as well. They're the Dear Me embellishment kits. And I'm just going to put some enamel dots in all three of my main embellishment clusters. So I'm thinking of that one up in the top right hand corner that's really just a heart and a little, a little foam star. Um, it's, I'm thinking of it as like a little touch. It's not really an embellishment cluster. So I'm not going to place the same elements there. So it's not going to get a bow and it's not going to get uh, enamel dots. It's just going to be all by itself there. Just a little something for those who look a little bit closer. And the black kind of draws your eye up there so that it, the the pink heart won't get completely lost in the paper, in the pattern paper behind it or below it. So now I'm just putting the oh dear me little embellishment kits away back in their pouches. Oops, I forgot the, those little metal leaves that I didn't use on the layout. And I'm kind of liking how this is looking. I'm just putting a little foam dot underneath that sticker to hold it up so that once it goes in my scrapbook it's uh, gonna hold its space. Tidying up a little bit and grabbing my cake box that I use for mist. 
I'm going to do some masking with the pieces of paper that I used to clean my ink cartridge before, like while I was while I was uh, starting this layout. And I have some white Mr. Hueys in opaque white and I'm just trying to get them in three certain places, but those two blended into one <laughs> that I'm doing right now. So it's sort of in two big, one big place and then a little place over to the side. I use silver as well. At the at the last minute I decided to add some silver and I am going to go back with a baby wipe and just get some of the uh, s some ink landed in that Dahlia flower and also on the sticker and it's not going to dry very well on the sticker because the sticker is a slick surface so I would rather just wipe it off than try to wait for it to dry. So there I was just kind of playing with the idea of doing my journaling in that big space beside the title and I think that's a good place. I was going to do it in a blue color but I actually don't like the color of this pen it's more of a green than than the cap would suggest it's kind of a limey green color and so I'm not going to use that it's not gonna show up very well on that paper and I thought about using this navy blue pen but I'm not going to I'm gonna go back and use the same gray pen that I used for outlining I wasn't completely sure that I wanted to use the same pen for writing that I used for outlining but I definitely didn't want to use a black pen because I didn't I really wanted the only black things on this page to be those Cal Bertesky stickers and so if I put black journaling beside them I thought it would compete too much I really want this journaling to kind of blend into the, the design of the paper of the layout instead of stand out it's not really a design element it's just I want to tell the story I don't want it to stand out as you know here's the journaling um, as an ele as a design element itself I just want it to be in there you can see it and you can read it um, but it doesn't grab your eye and that's what I wanted to happen so now I'll just show you the close-ups so I sometimes would feel like if there's one dahlia on this page maybe I should have two dahlias on or three dahlias and the same with that butterfly pin but in this case I decided to just roll with it and relax the rules a little bit and just you know put unique things in each embellishment cluster so this one the unique thing I guess would be considered maybe the alarm clock um, and then the other cluster has a butterfly pin in it and then the other one has a dahlia so each of the clusters have some things that are the same and each of the clusters has one unique thing so that kind of bring you know the fact that they have a unique thing is is something that also brings them together so thanks so much for watching everybody I hope you have a really great scrappy week